What's up, everybody? With interest rates as high as 8%, foreclosure notices up 34% from a year ago, mortgage applications dropping to their lowest level since 1995, and home prices still really high, the US housing market seems to be completely broken. Even the home builders who seem to be winning in this market are starting to cut back on production moving forward, according to an analysis by Connor Sen for Bloomberg. So what exactly is going on? So today we'll take a look at a Washington Post article titled, The US Housing Market is Now Completely Broken by Connor Sen. A Realtor.com article titled, Foreclosures Continue to Surge, Are They a Threat to the Housing Market? by Claire Trapasso and Redfin's latest housing market update to see what they're all saying. And as usual, I will chime in with my opinion as well. So let's dive right in. According to Sen's article, for the first time since the Federal Reserve started to raise interest rates, every single part of the housing market is poised to worsen. A big component of the 2008 housing crash was the number of foreclosures and short sales that caused home prices to drop 30% between 2007 and 2012. So let's take a look at foreclosures first, and then we'll dig into the builder problems. And Terpasa's article, she writes that the number of homeowners hit with foreclosure notices in the third quarter jumped 34% from a year ago to nearly 125,000, according to a recent report from the real estate data research firm, Adam. They were up 28% from the previous quarter. Another way of looking at it is that one out of every 1,121 properties had a foreclosure filing in the third quarter. That's a return to almost pre-pandemic levels as foreclosure more moratoriums created during the beginning of COVID-19 have expired. FYI, filings include default notices, scheduled auctions, and bank repossessions. Foreclosures are on the rise again, Adam CEO Rob Barber said in a statement. It's evident that some homeowners are still grappling with the pandemic's financial aftermath or encountering new challenges. But while foreclosures and still high home prices are both similar to the housing bubble that burst in 2008, many Many real estate experts do not believe a foreclosure crisis is in our near future, since home buyers today are much stronger and more qualified than they were back then due to tightening lender criteria. Back then, many borrowers had interest-only loans that they should never have been approved for, so when the payment increased, they could no longer afford to pay their mortgage. Mind you, I am starting to see some of these interest-only loan products again, which I have not seen for a while, since interest rates are simply too high for the 30-year fixed rate for many buyers. I am hoping that these stricter lender requirements will protect those buyers today from getting a loan that they will not be able to afford after the interest-only time period ends, as there is no guarantee they'll be able to refinance after the five or seven year time period expires. But they do make me a bit nervous. And as far as home prices, there are more buyers than there are homes for sale. Low inventory has been a problem for a while now, causing good homes that do go on the market to still get multiple offers, even with these high interest rates, and sell for more than the asking price. And by good homes, I mean those homes that show well and are priced right. With little competition, the good homes are sought after, and prices are escalating higher and higher by buyers bidding against each other. According to Redfin's latest housing market update for the four weeks ending October 15, 30.2% of the homes for sale sold above their list price, up from 29% year over year. And 39.1% of the homes sold in two weeks or less, up from 36% a year ago. And when a home sells quickly, in my experience, that usually means it was priced right and most likely had multiple offers. That being said, approximately 11,000 homes were repossessed in the third quarter of 2023, representing a 5% jump from a year ago. So what's happening in our country? Between some markets experiencing a rise in foreclosures, while while other markets are still having multiple offers and prices escalating way above the asking price, it can be really confusing. But as we all know, real estate is very localized and not all homes are created equal. The states with the highest foreclosure rates, according to Adam, are New Jersey, with the highest rate among the states, with one in every 595 properties with a foreclosure filing. It was followed by South Carolina, with one in every 730, Delaware, with one in every seven 
739, Nevada with one in every 763, and Maryland with one in every 780. And even then, within each state, the numbers can be very different. I can speak specifically about Maryland, where I live, that according to a recent report from Adam, the Baltimore, Columbia, Towson metro area has one of the highest foreclosure rates of any metro area in the country. In the first half of 2023, there was about one foreclosure for every 431 homes, the 18th highest foreclosure rate of the 223 metropolitan statistical areas with populations of at least 200,000 that were considered in the report. If you look at the Maryland government site for foreclosure stats for the first quarter of 2023, many of the counties have very low foreclosure events, while others have much higher numbers. Where I am in Montgomery County, for example, the foreclosure events are much lower than some of the other counties. As far as cities, of the 223 metropolitan areas that Adam looked at, Houston had the highest foreclosure rate, with one in every 371 homes receiving a foreclosure filing. Atlantic City, New Jersey wasn't far behind with one in every 453. Cleveland had one in every 459. Bakersfield, California, one in every 456. And Columbia, South Carolina had one in every 503. Foreclosures are falling in Salt Lake City, Utah, with foreclosure starts dropping 74% year over year in the third quarter. The metro was followed by Chicago, down 35%, Kansas City, Missouri, down 34%, Columbus, Ohio, down 22%, and Milwaukee, down 21%. FYI, Adam only looked at metros with at least 1 million residents for this portion of the analysis. At the end of the day, in general, if you look at foreclosure activity today compared to pre-pandemic levels, we are still less today than we were back then. There were 185,580 properties with foreclosure filings in the first half of 2023, compared to 200 and 96,458 properties in the first half of 2019. And in 2010, there were approximately 1,654,634 foreclosures. So if we're not going to get a huge influx of inventory from foreclosures, where is it going to come from? Because the fastest way to bring down home prices is to increase inventory. The obvious choice would be new construction. But in Connor Sen's article, he reports that the housing market is responding very very differently to the latest run-up in mortgage rates compared to 2022. Then new construction was in high demand because home builders were offering buyers incentives to offset the higher mortgage rates, which made buying a house more affordable. A lack of inventory kept prices high, allowing companies to use their healthy profit margins to buy down mortgage rates and improve affordability for buyers. That just doesn't seem to be the case today as home builders are feeling the pain of mortgage interest rates at 8% and can no longer effectively offer a buy-down rate that incentives buyers. Buying down home loan rates to 5.5%, the magic level for would-be buyers, is a lot easier around 7% than around 8%. The National Association of Home Builders slash Wells Fargo gouged a sentiment dropped to its lowest level this month since January, which means they will likely reduce construction in the months ahead as profit margins fall. Builders have reported lower levels of buyer traffic as some buyers, particularly younger ones, are priced out of the market because of higher interest rates, said the National Association of Home Builder Chairman Alicia Huey. Higher rates are also increasing the cost and availability of builder development and construction loans, which harm supply and contributes to lower housing affordability. It is understandable why some experts are calling today's housing market the least affordable in decades. According to Black Knight, 38.6% of the median household income is required to make the monthly payment on an average home purchase, making housing the least affordable it's been since 1984. To put today's affordability levels in perspective, it would take some combination of up to a 28% decline in home prices, a more than 4% reduction in 30-year mortgage rates, or up to a 6 60% growth in median household incomes to bring home affordability back to its 25-year average, said Andy Walden, Vice President of Enterprise Research and Strategy at Black Knight. According to Redfin's latest housing market,
market update, the median sales price is up 2.5% year over year, and the median asking price is up 5% year over year, the biggest increase in a year. New listings are down 1.9% year over year, and active listings are down 13.6% year over year. So home prices are up and inventory is down. These are national statistics. The metros with the biggest year over year median sales price increases are Anaheim, California up 17.4%, West Palm Beach, Florida up 12.7%, New Brunswick, New Jersey 11.4%, San Jose, California 10.6%, and Newark, New Jersey 10.6%. The metros with the biggest year over year sales price decreases are Austin, Texas down 4.1%, San Antonio, Texas down 2.9%, Houston, Texas down 2.3%, New York, New York down 1.2%, and Jacksonville, Florida down 1.1%. Nationally, 6.7% of the homes for sale each week had a price drop, and the median days on market is 32 days, down from 35 days a year earlier. So what is going to change to make our housing market more affordable? One possibility is if investors start to sell off their inventory at a discount. If they do choose to bring a lot of homes on the market at the same time, home prices could go down dramatically, especially in those areas that are investor heavy. It's hard to say what will happen in the future of the housing market, as it seems like anyone you ask has a different opinion. And sadly, they may all be right. It just depends on where you live. But one thing we can all agree on is that the affordability crisis in our country is out of control and something has to give. Jesse Park, a US economist that leads a team at Bank of America, believes we're in for a housing recession similar to the 1980s rather than 2008. If you wanna hear more about what Park has to say, definitely check out this video next. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.